Hello friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will cover job statement. So this is the agenda. We will discuss why job statement is required in the description section. Then we'll see the syntax of the job statement followed by positional parameters and keyword parameters. So why job statement is required? Job statement gives identity of the job to the operating system and it is always the first statement in any JCL. If job statement is not there in the JCL, then your JCL will never get executed. Then this is the syntax. Here these are the identifier. Then the job name. Here you can mention any job name. Then we need to mention the keyword. This is job. And then the positional parameters and keyword parameters. Now we'll start with positional parameters. So we have two positional parameters. One is accounting information, other is programmer's name. Accounting information is related to billing. So it will be provided to you by your organization. And then we have programmer's name. Here you need to write the name of programmer who has done the coding for the GCL. Now next we have keyword parameters. So we'll start with class. Class specifies the nature of job, whether a job should be executed for a long time or whether a job should be executed for a short time. The valid, valid classes are from A to Z and 0 to 9. So this, this will happen at the time of setup, like which, which is the first priority or which is the last priority. So then we have message level and message class. Message class specifies when, whether, where the output should be printed, like it should be in the spool or it should be in the data set. And then message level specify what type of messages should be printed, which are defined in the message class, the output mode. So if you want to print only the job statement, then that can be specified in message level. Or if you want to print all the output statements, that can that is also possible in message level. Then we have notify. Notify is used to notify the user whether your job has been executed successfully or not. If the condition code is 00, that means your job is successful. Then we have condition parameters. Condition parameters is used to check the condition and it decides whether a step to be executed or not. So we will cover more about this in the coming videos. Then we have reason. Reason is used like how much space has been given to that job for execution. So we can change that. Then we have priority. It is dependent on the class. Suppose we have five jobs of the same class, then the priority will decide which jobs should be executed first. Then we have restart. Suppose you want to restart a job from a particular step. You do not want to uh, execute the first three steps and you want to start from the fourth step. Then in the restart parameter, you need to mention the fourth step name and then the job will be uh, submitted and the job will start from the fourth step itself. Then we have type run. Type run scans the job or it helps the job until it is released by the operator. Then we have time. Time parameter decides like for how much time the job should be executed. Suppose you want to check whether the job should take more than three seconds or not. We can put a check here. If it takes more than three seconds, the job will abandon or else we can give no time as well, like the maximum limit. Then we will see all these functions practically. We will see the job statement and the different parameters. I am opening a PDS. So this is our test JCL PDS. This is uh, one I've created for job statement. I'm opening it in edit mode. Reset. As discussed, job statement is the first control statement in the JCL and it gives the identity of the job to the operating system in the spool and in the scheduler. So this is our job statement, these two lines. And these are the comment statements. So to explain you, I have coded it. So this is the job name. Here you can mention any job name up to eight characters. Then the keyword to identify it as a job is the job. J O B job statement. So this is the keyword of job statement. We write job and then starts the parameters. So as discussed in previous video, we have two type of parameters. One is positional and one is keyword parameters. So we have two positional parameters on job statement. First is the accounting. This is 
is accounting sorry okay yeah so acct i have written here so this is accounting here you mentioned the accounting number so this is used for billing purpose you will get this number from your organization then the next is the programmer name this identifies the person or group who is in charge of the gcl this is not a mandatory parameter and can be replaced by a comma so if you don't want this just code a comma here and start with the keyword parameters <coughs> So next is class based on the time duration and the number of resources required by a job companies assign different job and we have different classes these can be visualized as individual schedulers used by the operating system to receive the job placing the job in the right scheduler will aid in easy execution of the jobs some companies have different classes for the jobs in the test and production environment so these are the valid numbers a to z and 0 to 9 they depends on the installation setup like what we need to assign for high priority what we need to assign for low priority or something like that then we have priority so once we allocate a job class we assign the priority in the same class So if this parameter is not specified then the job is added to the end of the queue in the specified class. So this is the syntax it starts from 0 to 15 it also depends from uh, uh, system to system like how we installed it whether 0 is the highest priority or whether 15 is the highest priority. Then we have message class to specify the output destination for the system and job messages when the job is complete we define message class so again the valid values of class can be from a to z and 0 to 9 so this is our class this is our message class so it depends upon setup to setup then we have message level so here I have mentioned message level and it is used to specify the type of messages to be written to output destination specified in the message class. So the syntax is message class equal to st statement comma messages. So for statements we have three values 0, 1 and 2. Value 0 is all the messages related to job statement will be printed. So 1 is all the JCL statements only and 2 is only the input JCL statement. Similarly, how these message, messages should be written like if it is 0, so it means messages if the job terminates abnormally and 1 if the job, irris, job terminates irrespective of normal or abnormal termination. So every time the message will be written. Then we have notify. The system sends the success or the failure message to the user specified in this parameter. So either you can mention the user ID or you can simply write and SYS UID. So it means the person who has submitted the job, he will get the notification for that. So here we have got it notify is equal to SYS UID. Then we have type run. So it it specify the special processing of a job so we can give the values as hold or scan so if type run is equal to scan then it will check only for the syntax errors without executing the JCL so it will check and it will uh, in the spool you can see like these are the errors and if you mention type run is equal to hold so here we have mentioned type run is equal to scan and if you mention type run is equal to hold so I am um, do, I'm, uh, typing F8 paste down so we need to see so hold the jobs will be on hold until it is released by the operator all these parameters are optional parameters 
and they can be in any order so like I have mentioned here notify first then message class then type in so these keyword parameters they can take any value then we have restart so suppose if you want to restart a job from your second step or your third step then you need to mention the restart in the job statement is itself so here you can see I mentioned restart from step 2 so it will start when we'll submit this ACL it will start from the step 2 also suppose if we have included a proc proc is a pro procedure so we'll discuss in detail in the coming videos so we have a proc and we need to start from step 2 inside that proc so we can do that also from here in the job statement we can write step name dot proc step name so then we have region so here we have we haven't coded but you can give any value like the syntax is region is equal to nk or mk so here n and m are any numbers and k is kilobyte or and m is megabyte so it specifies the address space required to run a job so we can give 10k 20k so it depends from environment to environment and from job to job like how many resources it want how many space it want address space basically and then in the end we have comment so this will not be a part of executables when we'll submit it this this thing will not be executed so it will be treated as a comment so this is all about the job statement in the next video we'll cover exec statement